What's up everyone, Brian Phobos here. Today we're gonna to talk about Nano, which was formerly Rayblox. Now, seven days ago, I wrote an article on Steemit called Nano Chart Looks Delicious, Bitcoin Chart Looks Fugly. And then here in the last seven days, we have had this, this upswing. Now, the way I spotted this was I just happened to click on it and it had essentially completed this boom and bust pattern that we typically look at where you have the euphoric state, you know, everything goes up, everybody's greedy and delusional, and then we have this capitulation state and the dis this despair and everything kind of blows off to the norm. Now, we haven't had a long kind of blow off period, but it, you know, it kind of started to come down. And I just think that people kind of spotted that pattern. It went from under a dollar, clear up to $37, and then went along. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Nano. I did a review on it early in the year when it did that epic pump. It's a pretty good video. It's still relevant, but you know, you don't necessarily have to watch it, but they had rebranded from Rayblox. And one of the, there were several things that I was impressed with it. The white paper was actually very, very interesting, very technical, and the technology was, was very interesting. Now, Nano is a directed acyclic graph or a DAG coin. And the others that are popular, that use this technology are IOTA and Byteball. So Nano is kind of the third in those three that have become pretty popular um, that use that technology. Now, one of the most important things to note on Nano is there's no additional inflation. All the supply is out there. So you don't have miners who have to pay electricity costs or equipment costs selling this into the market. All the supplies out there and um, that definitely changes the dynamic how it relates to other coins and if this has a potential to pump again pretty hard so that'll that's yet to be seen but let's look into a couple other things now we did not get down it got to 89 cents and the previous lows were you know whatever here like 17 15 cents 23 cents all that kind of stuff now does it necessarily have to go lower than it's low if you look at bitcoin charts which this still looks fugly and I'm not trying to talk smack about Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. I'm just saying as it relates to this typical boom and bust pattern that we've typically seen in Bitcoin, it has not completed this descent. I feel like that this is, you know, everything that's happened here is a confirmed pattern that it would play this out and maybe go down to three thousand dollars or twenty five hundred or those sort of prices now is that going to happen i don't know if the etf comes out which we've been hearing about since 2014 if you're around then it's literally like a broken record and we've been hearing this stuff since 2014 about ets i hope it happens guys but i'm not going to hold my breath that's a good way to die because i don't think it's happening tomorrow you know i don't think it's it's this could play out for several months where they're, the SEC is reviewing the ETF submissions. Um, but in the past, you see you have a boom period. And then the bust period, the ground level floor is higher than the previous ground level floor. Same thing. Boom, bust. This floor was bigger than this floor. And then I think that we probably have the same similar type thing. That the new floor is going to be higher than this floor but we don't know how low that's gonna be. Does it stick around 6,000 or does it go down to 3,000 or does it go down to 2,000, who knows? Nobody really knows. Um, and with Nano, we don't know. Now, here's an example of a coin, Steam, that went and it was clear down, say 22 cents, 25 cents, whatever, and then it went up to over $4 in 2016 and then it actually went clear down to seven cents. Now, why was it? At the time, it actually had over 100% inflation. It no longer has that. It has around 7 or 8% inflation right now. So the dynamics are different. Um, it has sort of, in a way, gotten closer to completing this bust pattern. Um, you know, does it, does it level out and it's on skid row for a while? Not really sure. Or does it pick up real strong? Who knows? I hope it picks up. Have a position there as well. Um, with Nano, I'm actually upside down i bought you know in this parabolic phase taking a light position knowing that it probably would come down then i i averaged down basically and my average is around 15 bucks and stuff so i'm still underwater on that investment now 
you know, even though I spotted this seven days ago, I just, I didn't really have, didn't really have the funds that I wanted to allocate over to Nano and take the chance at that time. Um, but obviously now there's a lot more eyes on it and stuff like that, uh, which is great. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to let it play out like a little bit longer. Um, today it is down, you know, beneath just everything else like Bitcoin and stuff like that. Everything else is kind of getting a little bit of a boost and, and it's kind of falling because it has pumped pretty hard from 89 cents to 303. So that's interesting to see. Now, a couple other things, what's happened here recently, you know, new wallets, online wallet, the mobile apps and the desktop wallets, which is great because when I originally made this video, there was no mobile wallets and stuff like that. So they have been able to do more development on it, which is, um, nice to see and then let's say roadmap for the future they're working mainly on merchant services and for um, point of sale systems which who isn't if you're trying to be a transactional currency then that's what you want you want adoption point of sale systems merchant services everybody's doing that uh, now if we look at a couple other examples let's say just according to the dollar value litecoin has not really completed this descent now i'm bullish on litecoin i think litecoin will definitely hit all-time highs in the future and like it'll, it'll go to a thousand someday kind of thing and same thing with monero monero has not completed this bust pattern you know this um you know boom and bust pattern so nano has for the most part completed it and other times when i've seen this with like digibyte over here it you know had the boom and then it had this bust and I had spotted that before, and this was a YouTube um, screenshot, and you know I used this for for Steemit as well. Basically, last fall when Digibyte entered this whole thing and it had planed out, and I was saying, you know, is this a buy? And I bought at 1.2 cents, and it rode up to 10 and stuff like that. So, um, you know, this could be a point. This could be an entry point for you for Nano. I don't think that Nano is going to slip into obscurity. So let's talk about some of the positives and negatives. Okay, so we have the new mobile desktop and web wallets. That's great. Free and instant transactions. There's other there's other systems that offer that same thing, but they pay for it with inflation, like EOS and Steam offer free and instant transactions, but um, they're paying for that with the new coins that are minted. So it's, it's got that inflationary model with nano. You don't have that inflation. You're actually doing a small amount of proof of work on your local device, which is very interesting. No inflation or additional coins minted into existence. It's completed its death spiral. Listed on Binance, which is the largest exchange in the world. That's huge. So it you know, has plenty of liquidity. Negatives of nano, mainly on altcoin exchanges that don't have fiat pairings. Um, so what I'm saying by that, it's not on like Coinbase and Kraken and um, those types of exchanges where they could have a US dollar hash. So somebody could go straight from US dollar or Euro straight into Nano. Potentially just another coin with the rest of the coins that are mainly just speculation. You have to understand that 95, maybe even 99% of the crypto market is purely speculation. And it's just people trying to buy low, sell high. So, you know... It could just be these ump it, you know, this game of don't get dumped on. So play with your own risk. Um, I know I'm addicted, so not a lot of you guys probably are too. So just don't get dumped on. Main function is just transactional currency. Tough to gain adoption. You know, there's a lot of, obviously a lot of coins are trying to do that. Even, you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin. Bitcoin Cash, um, you know, is it trying to be a world currency that's going to replace fiat? Is that the main play here? Uh, there's a lot of players in that space. Everybody's trying to do that for the most part, except for the platforms like Ethereum, like EOS, you know, that kind of stuff. But they even have that kind of function built in and oftentimes do it better than what some of the transactional currency ones do it. So. Um, we'll see. There's a lot of competition in that space. No financial incentive for someone to run a full node to support the network since there's no mining or additional coins being minted. You have to understand that one of the things that secures networks like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero 
are miners getting rewards from the inflationary model? They're getting, mint, they're getting rewarded the new coins in return for processing transactions. With Nano, you don't have that. So everybody running a full node is just doing it almost out of the kindness of their heart and to support the network. And that could ultimately end up being an attack vector. It's yet to be seen. Um, it seems like it hasn't been too much of an issue, but we will see in the future. And like I said, the three main DAGs are Byteball, IOTA, and Nano. So interesting if you want to play in that technology space, you know, kind of opposed to traditional blockchains. It doesn't really use a blockchain. It actually has like a small, almost like your own individual blockchain, each individual wallet, which tracks the transactions. Interesting technology. It's completed this boom and bust cycle. It's traded on the largest exchanges. And the biggest thing, there is no additional inflation. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out, guys. Now, if we look at a couple others, like I said, Litecoin and Monero have not completed their parabolic thing. If we look at Google Trends, it's a little bit hard to gain anything from, from this because when they rebranded from Rayblox, you know, it's like you can't just type in nano. You're not really going to get the right results. So you have to do like nano cryptocurrency. And then it's like, well, are people even typing that? Whereas with something like Monero, there's only one Monero. There's only one smart cash. There's only one Bitcoin kind of thing. You say, oh, what about Bitcoin cash? <laughs> um, but you get what I'm saying here. It's a little bit hard to gain off of Google Trends to see if people are searching that. Ultimately, that's reflective of the price, the way these trends go. And if the price is down, there's not as many people searching for it. That's just human psychology, human nature, human emotions. At the end of the day, is Nano a potential purchase? Yeah, I think you guys should keep it on your radar. It's not financial advice. You have to, you have to realize that even though it's worth $3 right now, even if you threw $1,000 at it, it doesn't mean that it can't go down to 150 and be worth 500 bucks or it goes down to 25 cents. You know, you, you just don't know where this stuff's going. So at the end of the day, um, you've probably got a good chance to get your average down. And hopefully even if this goes up to 10 or 15 or something again, um, and when that'll be, it could be six months, it could be a year, it could be two years, who knows? Not really sure on time frame, but something to look at. Interesting technology and a lot of eyes have been on it recently. But anyway, guys, I just want to do a quick update on nano which was formerly ray blocks and again follow me on all social media at brian phobos instagram twitter youtube steam it see you guys later